Well, what is happening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of Tyler's Real Fishing. Today, I'm continuing the top five series with top five ways to fish a Senko. Now, if you guys have seen my last two top five baits, the top five summer baits and top five pond baits, you guys know that I talk about Senkos quite a lot because they are great for catching fish all around the world in both ponds and lakes. Now, some of these techniques that I discussed today are only going to work in lakes and some are only going to work in ponds, but together I believe that we can cover you know, the basics of how to fish a Senko effectively in every situation. Let's get started. Now, of course, everybody knows that Senkos catch fish and the name for all of them across the board is the Senko. Now, we all call them that or the Senko as a lot of people like to pronounce them, but every company has a different name for their own and V&M has the chopstick and I absolutely love this thing. Uh, my dad actually fell in love with it before I did, uh, before I even got to use it. And it has incredible durability, great action, just as soft as any other brand out there, uh, and catches just as many fish, if not more. And so let's talk about how to rig it. So straight out of the box, this thing looks pretty good to me. I mean, I'd eat it if I was a fish, but you gotta put a hook on it in order to catch them. And so the first way that I'm gonna talk about is a Texas rig. Now to do a Texas rig, you just take a standard worm hook or an extra wide gap hook and rig it straight to the top. And so I'm gonna kinda do the rigging of that here real quick in front of this white towel. And so you basically want to take, this is a four wide gap hook. I'm just going to take it through the top, rig it through the tip of the bait there, about the first quarter or third inch. Then you take the bottom here and you run it through the top. Kind of poorly rigged there, but that is a Texas rig for you right there. You can either fish it weightless, just like this, or weighted with a bobber stopper, just like that. That's a three eighths, three eighths ounce tungsten weight. Now the cool thing about this is you can turn it into a Carolina rig and something I like to call a Texas two-step, which I will explain here in a second. Now Texas rigs are great ways to catch fish. You can cast them around shallow cover, uh, you know, around a bank that just has grass or even nothing. Fish love to eat Texas rigs in any sort of pond and lake that you guys have. This is the standard rig that I recommend to everybody uh, and so we'll move on to Carolina rigs here in a second. So when talking about Carolina rigs, I didn't invent a Carolina rig, I didn't invent the Texas two-step, which I like to call it, but I created the name. And so basically how a Carolina rig works is you have a weight that is up your line from your hook. Uh, that way the line and the bait is free swinging and allows it to float up uh, and gives it a whole new action different than a Texas rig. And so basically what I do is I rig up, I believe Lake Fork, I did a video on this a little while ago, two bobber stoppers, you guys can get them on Tackle Warehouse or Eagle Claw makes them as well at Dick's Sporting Goods. You put them on either side of the weight. Then you can slide your weight up your line. Instant Carolina rig. Easy way to create a Carolina rig without having to get the hassle of a, a swivel, a bead, a weight. That way you can just have one easy system to go quickly from Texas rig to Carolina rig. Now, like I said, the advantages of a Carolina rig are, of course, your bait is now away from your hook. And so instead of the fish biting your bait and feeling the weight and maybe spitting it out, it is free to have this bait drag along the bottom. And most often when you drag it, it shoots this bait straight up and allows it to fall weightless back down, which is a great way to catch especially deep finicky bass on a Carolina rig. So with those two out of the way, let's move on to one of my favorites, the wacky rig. So the next way that I love to fish a Cinco is on a wacky rig. I've noticed a very sharp decline in the amount of people using wacky rig Cinco's as opposed to Texas rigged, and I think that is a big mistake. They both have their own purposes and they both catch very, very different uh, fish. They, they catch fish in different mindsets for sure. A Texas rig catches a certain type of fish and a wacky rig usually catches a more finesse type of fish. And so basically what we're gonna do is there's two types of wacky hooks. You can even use a wide gap as your wacky hook. But I have two here. They are the ball, the ball wacky head, it usually has a weight on it, and actually, it, of course, it is a weight on the front, and then just a weightless with a weed guard. And so the kind of the two ways that I'm gonna rig those, is, or the one way, is straight through the middle of the bait. Now I see a lot of guys start fishing their wacky Senkos, and they'll go like this, they'll take their hook, the hook through the middle, and they'll say, all right, time to go fishing. Now the problem is, they get one fish, a bite on it, see, I, that's how durable it is, and takes a bite and you set the hook, and it rips right through the soft plastic, wasting your Senko, which is most often quite an expensive piece of soft plastic. One thing that I never see people use anymore besides all my tournament fishing buddies is the O-ring tool. You can buy these, I believe, at Tackle Warehouse, any Tackle website, and uh, also I, I think Dick Sporting Goods or Academy might sell them. This is the O-ring tool to go along with the O-rings. These here are, I believe, originally intended for electrical use uh, and, and for nuts and bolts and things like that, but someone engineered them to be round, 
uh, and about the size of a Cinco. So what you do is you stick your Cinco in the O-ring tool, just like this. You take an O-ring and you slide it up the tool. It has to be a little bit greased first, there you go. That way, the O-ring slides right on top of your, can you see it there? O-ring slides right on top of your Cinco. And when you go in to rig your wacky hook, you can just go like this, boom. That way, if any fish pulls down on this, it is not ripping out because you have an O-ring there. You could have a fish go like this. And look at that, the Cinco is completely off of the O-ring, but you still have your bait. And I can't tell you how many times over the years I have saved hundreds of dollars in Cinco's because I use the O-ring tool. And so that's kind of my uh, advice for fishing Cinco's wacky rig. Let's move on to deep fishing Cinco's, to fishing Cinco's deep. <laughs> so the last two ways that I want to talk about when fishing a Cinco, uh, and two of my most favorite, especially during the summertime when those bass go out deep like you heard in one of my previous top five videos and chill out and, and basically eat french fries on the couch, is the deep bait. So we have a deep heavy shaky head and a deep heavy wobble head. Let's get started talking about the wobble head. So the cool thing about this bait is that yes, it is a Texas rig hook. It is a three or four aught, you know, wide gap hook. But Tommy Biffle, years ago, a pro fisherman, if you guys don't know who he is, you should, because he's one of the best anglers of all time, created the wobble head system. Now what's cool about this, as you can see, the head, much like a shaky head or a football jig, is uh, separated from the hook, which allows your bait so much more action in the water. So basically, I'm gonna rig it the same way as I did the Texas rig. Fish are jumping over there, I wanna go fishing. Rig it just like Texas rig, boom. That way, when your hook is attached to the bait, your, 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 your uh, Cinco is attached to the hook, it is free swinging like this, and under the water, this looks tantalizing to a bass. All you gotta do is cast it over a brush pile, over a rock pile, wiggle this thing along, and that Cinco is just going brrrr. And so Tommy Biffle, who created this thing, loves to make a steady retrieve just like this and let it rattle across the bottom. I love to do a drag and maybe like a hop and let it sink. And this thing just has incredible action and catches a lot of deep fish. But it is not always for the right circumstances. I find that this thing catches a good amount of chunky bass, but it doesn't catch the giants like the big shaky head does. Let's move on to that. So the fifth method in which I'm gonna talk about fishing a Cinco today is the deep shaky head. Now, of course, these top five that I like to fish are not by no means all the five ways you can fish a Cinco. There's the nail rig, the Nico rig, and many other rigs like those. But this is the, the method that I like to use to catch the biggest bass in your lake. And that is because it is a big presentation and it shows the fish a Cinco in a way they've never seen it quite before. And so basically, this is the, I believe Yum makes the spade, it's the Jason Christie model. And you take the Cinco here, you shove the, the top of it into the screw lock and you screw it in kind of till about it gets, you know, snug with the shaky head. Then instead of popping it out like you do with the Texas rig, you hook it similar, but only bring it kind of about there. So you don't pop it out and bring it back in, you just kind of feed it right through the plastic till it's about to pop out. And this thing works incredibly well, especially out deep, because if you can imagine, with the flat head on it, the Cinco, it allows the Cinco to stand straight up, which gives the fish a whole new perspective. You know, with the Carolina rig, the Texas rig, Wacky rig, even wobble head, the bait is most often horizontal. This gives the bait a very vertical presentation, and I don't know if it intimidates the bass or makes the bass feel, you know, aggravated towards the bait, but it really gets those big ones to bite, especially out deep. And so I like to throw it over brush piles, rock piles, deep points where those fish are hanging out in the summertime, and it can catch you the biggest bass oftentimes of your life. I've caught some giant bass in this thing, and I hope you guys can too. So that's the video, guys. I hope you enjoyed another top five series. Now, this one was different because it was only focusing on one bait, but I hope that you guys learned definitely some different ways to fish a Cinco that you hadn't thought of or tried of before. And so if you guys want to order some of these V&M Chopstick Cinco's, they will be linked down in the description below. Um, it's a company that I've been working with for a short time now, and I absolutely love their products. Their soft plastics are absolutely incredible. And so anything else from the hooks to the O-ring tool to anything I mentioned will be linked down in the description. We'll see you guys next time.